Hi, it's Dominic and Man Man from Domination Travels and we're here in Los Angeles, a city of angels. And we're gonna show you how we spend our time here. Every year, Los Angeles ranks as one of the most popular places to visit in the world. It's a massive city in land size and population, and it's also very diverse, which means there's plenty to see and do. On our first day in LA, we are going to hit up some of the classic glamour sites such as Hollywood, Beverly Hills, the Runyon Canyon, and Griffith Park. After starting the day off with breakfast at Squirrel in the Silver Lake neighborhood, we made our way over to Hollywood. In Hollywood, we took a stroll along the Walk of Fame, taking photos of our famous celebrities. And we also caught a glimpse of Gauman's Chinese Theater. You have probably seen the Chinese Theater on your TV or in movies, as it has hosted many famous premieres over the years. Hollywood can become a bit over the top with the costume characters. But thankfully, just a short walk away is Runyon Canyon a hiking trail that lets you soak in SoCal's beautiful nature. Alright, we're at Runyon Canyon, a beautiful spot for hiking. You get a whole view of the entire city and lots of the cool sights, so this is definitely pretty fun to do. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> man being distracted by dogs, because there's, there's tons so of dogs, many dogs here. here yeah. There are different length paths that you can take, but we chose the 1.8 mile version, which should take about an hour, depending on how much time you want to spend taking pictures and enjoying the sweeping views. For lunch, we're going to drive out a little bit east to a sushi stop location, which was made known for appearing in a Worth It Sushi episode. While the prices are not quite as cheap anymore, it was still affordable and delicious. Next on our to-do list was to drive a little west to Beverly Hills and to the famous Rodeo Drive shopping strip which is among the most expensive shopping areas in the world. Now obviously we aren't going to buy anything here, but it was fun to explore for a little bit and we stumbled into a neat immersed in Wonderland themed Hollywood pop-up exhibit. Oh, and this statue here was pretty funny too. A quick drive from Beverly Hills, we stopped in for bubble tea, which is called Boba by the Locals, from Alfred's Tea Room for their famous rose flavored tea. And then with the sun setting low, we rushed out to Griffith Park and Observatory where we barely made it in time to capture the beautiful view of the city during sunset. When you visit Griffith, don't spend all your time outside and forget about the inside observatory. The land and the funds to build the observatory were donated by Griffith J. Griffith so that visitors could come and learn for free on the belief that astronomy should be made available to everyone. The exhibits inside are fun and an informative way to learn about the universe and we recommend that you check it out. Our day was packed with activities and adventures, but there's a lot more we need to see and do, so we'll call it a wrap on day one and get some rest for tomorrow. For day number two, we are spending the day downtown, a part of the city once ignored by visitors, but now is starting to make a huge comeback with unique museums, food, and attractions. Our first stop was to check out the City Hall. It was first built in 1928 and features a unique exterior architecture, as well as a free observation deck on the 27th floor. That's right, a free observation deck. After taking in the view of downtown, it was time to head over to one of the newest attractions in the city, the Broad Museum. The Broad just opened in 2015 and features the impressive collection of contemporary art owned by the Broad family. What makes this museum unique is that many of the exhibits invite visitors to get up close and experience the art in person. Our favorite exhibit was The Visitors, which records nine musicians making an album together and isolates each musician with their own screen and speaker. When you stand in the center of the room, you can hear the entire song, but when you move towards an individual, you'll be drawn into their part of the composition.
Right next to the Broad Museum is the Walt Disney Concert Hall, made famous thanks to its bold architecture meant to mimic sheets of music being tossed in the wind. While it's fascinating to behold from a distance, it's also worth taking 15 minutes to explore up close as well. It was soon lunchtime, so we made our way to Grand Central Market just a couple blocks away. Grand Central is one of the oldest markets in LA, and while there are some options for produce, meats, and grocery items, what makes Grand Central awesome is the huge selection of awesome food stalls. So much to eat, we gotta pick something good. I don't know what to choose, <laughs> too many options. Well, we're going to have to give this some more thought, and then you'll see what we pick. Man Man went for Thai food at Sticky Rice, while I had an egg sandwich from the famous Egg Slut. From the Central Market, there are several sites that you can visit in a matter of minutes. First, there is the Angel's Flights Vernacular, one of the shortest vernaculars in the entire world. Across the street on the other side, is the timeless Bradbury building built in 1893. It features a one-of-a-kind interior architecture that feels like traveling back in time when you step inside. And finally, we went to visit the Last Bookstore, which is a huge space focusing on selling used books and music. It has a really cool vibe and a few fun literature-inspired displays, including cool book tunnel. Next, we went over to check out Little Tokyo, a historic center of LA's Japanese community. The main strip features plenty of Japanese shops and restaurants, and a block south you can find a small but peaceful Japanese garden that has no cost to enter. With the sun beginning to set, we headed a couple blocks north to Union Station and Overa Street. Built in the 1930s, Union Station has a very unique look and feel that combines several architectural styles in one. The space is huge and is much more impressive in person than in any of the pictures we saw ahead of time. It was definitely worth spending a few minutes to explore. Right next to Union Station is Overa Street which connects Los Angeles back to its roots as a Spanish and then Mexican settlement. Well, we finally made it to Alvera Street and unfortunately it looks like we're a little bit late. Some things are already starting to close down. Yeah, so if you want to come here and spend some time and see all the shops, we would suggest coming here earlier. But right now, because the, it's nighttime, the lights are all lit up, so it actually looks pretty beautiful. Yeah, it's December, so there's just less hour in the day, so it's tough to cram everything in, but there's still some things open, so we're going to see what we can do at this time. Mm -hmm. Today, the street is a bit touristy, but it is lined with historic adobe buildings that date back over a hundred years. As day gives way to night, we end our time in downtown and get ourselves ready for another great day in LA. For day three, we finally made our way west to the ocean to enjoy LA's amazing beach culture in Venice and Santa Monica. We begin our day in Venice for a morning stroll through the sometimes overlooked Venice canals. This is a unique neighborhood in LA that was designed to mimic Venice, Italy with waterway canals. But as cars became more popular modes of transportation, many canals were filled in with dirt. But the few canals that are left make for a tranquil neighborhood to walk through and escape the busyness of Venice Beach. For breakfast, we made our way over to A-Frame, a Hawaiian restaurant that serves all-you-can-eat, stacks-on-stacks pancakes for brunch on weekends. What makes A-Frame's pancakes so good are the yummy Hawaiian and Asian-inspired ingredients, including red bean, banana macadamia, and lilikoi butter. And oh yeah, the fried chicken pancake was also a popular choice.
Oh, that's really good. Wow. After trying each of the flavors, we were fully satisfied. After breakfast, we made our way to Venice Beach. Venice Beach is one of the most popular and most unique places to check out in LA. It's said that this is where LA's alternative culture was born, and as you stroll down the boardwalk, it's easy to see how Venice Beach got its reputation. In addition to people watching, a couple notable things to see is the skate park and the famous outdoor gym, Muscle Beach. For food, we got a blue bowl from Great White, which was very delicious. When you're in Venice, you should also make time to walk through Abikini, which has been dubbed as one of America's coolest streets. Lined with plenty of shops and places to eat, Abbot Kinney seems to check off all the stereotypes you would have for a California hipster. While it's not very cheap anymore, this is still a street worth spending some time on. California is famous for its endless stretches of beautiful beaches, and it's a must to watch at least one sunset while chilling on the pristine sand. So we headed over to Santa Monica, and lucky for us, visiting December means that we can enjoy the beach without the crowds, and just relax with some California dreaming. Santa Monica is also home to one of LA's most famous attractions, the Santa Monica Pier. The pier is a busy place that is packed with locals and tourists alike, and it's home to various attractions. But the most noteworthy is the Pacific Park Family Amusement Park and its Ferris wheel. We strolled along the pier until the end and spent some time to enjoy a classic Californian sunset. As the day turned into night, we headed into Santa Monica to have some dinner. There are many great options for food here, but we chose to go to Hi Ho for their delicious Wagyu burger. It was the perfect way to refuel after a successful day. But before calling it a night, we decided to drive out to Boba Guys because we were craving some bubble tea. We decided to go with the delicious strawberry matcha boba. And with our craving satisfied, we turned in to sleep before our last activity before going home tomorrow. So we actually had one extra morning in LA before our flight left to go home. And we spent it at Smorgasburg, an open air food market that happens only on Sundays. We're here at Smorgasburg. Yep, this is a weekly food market that happens in downtown. There's so many different food trucks and food options available here. And we're gonna eat everything. Yeah, so let's see what we can do here. To eat, we decided to spread out and try a couple different things, including an amazing pork belly with pomegranate Peruvian taco, a Korean style chicken katsu sandwich, as well as a mouth-watering pastrami sandwich. Before chasing it all down with a Dole Whip pineapple ice cream. We wanted to include this place in our guide because if you are in LA on a Sunday, we definitely recommend that you check it out. Oh, and the parking is free here. We had an amazing time in LA, and there are so many things to do in this great city that it's impossible to do it all in just three short days. We just barely scratched the surface of LA. So if you've been here, please let us know what you would recommend visitors to check out. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please support us by liking it and sharing it. We're always working on new travel content, so please subscribe to stay in the loop. Thanks for watching, and never stop exploring.